Hello everyone, my name is Estefania Rojas. I work in the Laboratory of Plants Biotechnology at Universidad San Francisco de Quito in Ecuador. And today I'm going to present a research project we have been working on lately, which is assembling Martinho's genome using Oxford nanopore sequencing. So to start with, I'm going to give a little bit of a context of the species we are working with. Martinho is a wild berry that grows in the Andean Paramo from Venezuela to Peru. And the Paramo is an ecosystem which is really important for different countries as it is a crucial water supplier. And um, it is characterized by low temperatures from eight to 17 degrees Celsius, non-arboreal vegetation, high UV radiation and high humidity. And so Mortinho grows in this important ecosystem, and it is known that its berries have different ethnobotanical properties that give different benefits um, to health, such as a high content of anthocyanins, uh, flavonoids, and antioxidants. And also, um, this species is really important as uh, for Ecuador, as with its fruits, we prepare um, a traditional beverage around this time of the year, for the Day of the Dead, which is called a uh, Colada Morada. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we also prepare uh, other products such as jams and wines. And it is also known that uh, these uh, berries are an important source of income for local indigenous communities as they are, as they are the ones who go to the Paramo and collect uh, the berries and sell them on the local markets. And so because of the importance of Martinho, we decided to perform a previous study to understand what is the state of the populations in the Ecuadorian highlands. And so we collected samples along all the Ecuadorian highlands of Martinho and found that the populations have a, a moderately high genetic diversity. And when performing a, a, a structure analysis, we found uh, that these populations were divided in four main genetic clusters and that were divided in three different regions along the Ecuadorian highlands, the northern region, and the central region, and the southern region. And so the red cluster was mainly associated with the northern region, the yellow cluster to the central re region and the southern and the blue cluster to the southern region. And we also found there was an additional cluster which was not located mainly in any of the uh, regions along the Ecuadorian Highlands, but it was more associated to um, the place where it was collected, which was a place with high altitude above 3,100 meters above sea level. And so after performing this study, we decided uh, we wanted to study further these species. And so we wanted to sequence, assemble, and annotate Martinho's genome um, to create a genomic resource as a tool to promote Martinho's conservation. And later on, using this genome as a reference to identify genes associated to climate change. And so as part of the materials and methods, we collected young leaves from a single individual located at a Pichincha province in the Ecuadorian Highlands. And with the young leaves, we um, perform a protocol uh, from genomic tip, which was um, a, a published on Oxford community to extract high molecular weight genomic DNA. After we extracted DNA, we perform a step to remove short reads using short read eliminator kit from Circulomics. And after that, we prepare a total of four sequencing libraries using the LSK 109 um, library preparation kit. And after that, we loaded these four sequencing libraries into two flow cells and sequence them, sequence them on the mean ion device. And so with the data generated from these four sequencing runs, we perform a bioinformatic analysis. First of all, we remove the adapters using a program called Porchop, and then we uh, did a read filtration based on quality using Nanofield. We perform a genome assembly using three different assemblers, GANU, FLY, and WTDBG2. And after that, we perform genome polishing using Apollo. 
a genome evaluation using Busco, and finally, an annotation step using Maker. Uh, it is important uh, to notice that this step is still being performed, and so the results will not be, uh, or the annotation part will not be presented uh, here. And so as part of the results, first of all, when performing the genomic DNA extraction, we uh, had very good results. The quality parameters 260 to 80 were um, of 1.87, which is in the um, recommended range to perform genome sequencing. And the parameter 260 to 30 was of 269, which is also within the range um, needed to perform genome sequencing. And as we can see on the agarose gel on the um, left upper hand side, uh, the genomic DNA as we can see here, is a, a clear band. There are no contaminants or no degradation. And so we use all this DNA to perform all the sequencing runs. And this is an example of a sequencing run. And as we can see, the N50 after performing the sequencing was of 23.8 kilobases, which is expected for high molecular weight genomic DNA, the translocation speed remained stable. And as we can see, as the time went by, we still had a lot of uh, pores sequencing our sample. And also the Q-score remained stable between eight and 10, which is expected for OS4 nanopore sequencing. And after this, uh, we uh, constructed this table of uh, principal or all, all the main assembly statistics for each assembler use. And as we can see, FLY has um, the best statistics as it has 691 uh, contexts, an assembly length of 526 megabases, and then 50 of three megabases, a coverage of 16X, which is higher compared to the other assemblers, and a Busco score of 93.1%, which is also higher compared to the other assemblers. And so with um, this assembly, we also constructed a table comparing uh, the fly assembly of uh, Martino uh, to uh, compare its assembly to other assemblies from other vaccinium species. It is important to notice that we have only used so far OMT technology. And in the other studies, they have used a combination of different sequencing technologies such as Illumina, Bagbayo or uh, Roche. And so as we can see, we have comparable results with the other studies, even though the coverage of our assembly is not as high as the other coverages from the other studies. The Busco score is pretty high and is um, comparable with the results found for the other studies. And so what we have achieved so far in this research, first of all, we have created the first rap genome assembly of a little known Andean Wolverine species that is key to the Param ecosystem. It is important to uh, notice and understand that Martin is very important for the Param ecosystem, as this ecosystem has been under anthropogenic pressure during the last years and has lost a uh, habitat and the ecosystem has become fragmented, but it is known that Martinho is one of the first species to grow in areas that have been subjected uh, to anthropogenic activities. And for example, born sites, this is the first species to regrow in these sites. Also, it is important to notice that we have used only nanopore sequencing for this study. And this is a, an accessible technology that has enabled laboratories such as ours to perform sequencing analysis, even though we don't have an specialized infrastructure and or limited resources. And also it is important to notice that with this research, we have generated genomic information for Martinho to perform future studies. Uh, such as the development of molecular markers for performing further genetic diversity studies, uh, to perform taxonomic studies, and also to, uh, to perform comparative studies with other vaccinium species. The next steps for this research is to perform new sequencing runs to improve coverage and assembly precision. 
develop new molecular markers such as SNPs to promote Martinez conservation and analyze dynamic regions that could represent adaptations that could be of interest in the face of climate change effects. And so I would like to acknowledge all the members of the Laboratory of Plants Biotechnology from Universidad of San Francisco de Quito and COSIVA for uh, funding uh, this study. Thank you very much for your attention and I am happy to answer any questions.